Good morning, my name is Gavin and this is House Mercantile and today we're doing the backyard apple pressing video. This is going to be a longer form video uh, covering the things a little bit more in detail. Uh, we've already done the pressing for the year so this is just the aftermath. Here are the things you're going to need for pressing apples. Um, the apple press it is outside because it doesn't really fit in here and I don't want to lug it in here so we'll talk about that later outside. Um, let me go ahead and point out each thing and then we'll talk about them in detail. I do want to let you know this is not a build video on building the actual press. I've already got mine built. I don't need to rebuild it. Maybe next year I'll do that. I will give a description of how I built it. Um, later on in the video I do point out the dimensions and kind of how to assemble it. But I'm going to point out each item and then we'll talk about them individually. You'll need some sort of pressing container, mesh bags, something to do the pressing, a grinder of some sort, and plates and blocks. For the drill is to replace that guy that goes on the crank. Building the press, you'll need some drill bits. An auger bit is very important. Holes in the bucket. I like using a Forstner bit and a deburring tool. Food safe lubricant for your jacks and clamps. And I believe, oh, you also need a basin to wash your apples in. And obviously you need apples. I think that's everything. Let's get started on the individual items. Hey, I forgot to mention this. You'll need some sort of sheet pan uh, with a hole drilled in it to catch the juice to be funneled into a, a bucket or whatever. So yeah, get one of those. Here's my press. It is four feet tall, four legs and 32 inches wide, two arms on top, four on bottom. And what you kind of do is you screw these two plates together and then screw them in here. Same down here, get everything attached and in place. And then use an auger bit to drill out these bolt holes and run some all thread or lag bolts or something to just bind it all together and tighten it down real nice. That gives it some stability. I have had it crack on me one year and I put glue and bolted in there. This year I maxed it out and I cracked it again and I re-screwed it all back together. So we'll see how long it lasts. I do want to build one of the traditional presses later, but for right now, this is what I've got. Okay, now on to getting it set up. One of the things I forgot to mention inside, you need some sort of catch bucket. I've got some steel pots that I've got that I'll set underneath to catch my juice as I'm pressing. And then we'll take our sheet pan with the hole drilled in it and position the pot below it. The pressing bucket. I could do an entire video about these, but I'm not. We'll just talk about the quick basics. This was my very first bucket that I used. Um, it is a food grade plastic, it says. It is HDPE2. All these buckets are, as you can see, I've got tear holes from them. I didn't drill out the holes very well. I just used a spiral bit, and that's why it's all fallen apart. I use that just for collecting apples now, but there's that one. Mainly that happens from the holes not being clean cut. I'll show you how to do that right now. And now that we got our holes drilled in our buckets, take a deburring tool and clean up your holes. You'll need to do inside and outside, but it'll clear off. all the plastic so it's very important to make sure that those holes are clean cut that's how you get the tear outs on it the bucket that i'm using this year that one did not cut clean and it is starting to tear out but it's holding up for us when that bucket broke on me i just so happened to have a brand new home depot bucket never been used before so i was like i'll just throw that together and use it internet got angry at me said that you can't use that because it's not great as food safe so we've retired that bucket for this year for you guys on the internet and we've made these two new buckets that bucket is another food grade plastic bucket it's labeled as such um, this is a pickle bucket it doesn't say food safe on it anywhere but it is also hdpe2 but that's our backup bucket because it's thicker walled than that one but i've not had to use it yet so we just have a spare bucket right now anyways let's go ahead and get moving on other things that you can use, you could use like a steel pot, drill holes into it. There's the traditional wood bucket. There's also slats that you can build. And then you press the apples in layers between those. Uh, Matt Cremona, I think that's how you say his last name. He's got a great apple press that uses that style. And I've not decided which one I want to build 
in the coming years. So I just haven't built my wooden bucket yet. I've got the metal bands to do it. I just ran out of time and we needed to start pressing apples right away. So that's where we are. So we'll take our bucket. It goes on next and our mesh bag that we got off Amazon. I got two of these and they come white, but eventually they do start to orange and yellow out from pressing apples and I'll replace them. So that just goes in the bucket and we'll fit it on there. Next up is the food grinder. Also, I got this off Amazon a few years ago. It has a hand crank that goes on it. Um, we did that for a little bit and then we switched and I found that my drill slides on there and works pretty well. On the drill, do switch it to your lower setting. Um, it makes things a little bit easier and grinds a little bit better. But we found that we can attach this and those slots fit between my posts and I can clamp it all together. My drill will just slide on. And like I said, two is too fast and doesn't really grind the apples. They get kind of caught up in it but that gives you enough slow torque that it grinds them pretty well. Um, I typically try and hold this in this position. That way, if it kicks, it'll kick down instead of up in my face. Just washing the apples and sorting through them, get yourself a wash basin, anything that'll hold water and your apples will work. Uh, I've got the hose on and I'll just start filling them up and we'll start sorting through apples take off any leaves. It won't hurt you. It's kind of like wine pressing. Sometimes they're left in for flavor, but you're looking for anything that you don't want to use. Throw that into your pig bucket. I'm kind of going slow so you can just see. Yeah, see, you don't want to use that. Sort through them once. And then as you wash them and you find more, oh man, it's cold. It's 36 degrees out here right now. On your drill, make sure you're using trigger discipline. If your hand's up here, you don't want your finger on there. So sometimes, sometimes they'll get caught like that. Just reach in there and pop it out or pop your drill in reverse and just bounce them a little bit. Once you start getting all this pulp in there and you notice this, reach in there and push it down just a little bit. Get your bucket nice and full. We'll go ahead and take off our grinder. And I usually just set it on top of my apples. Some people are concerned about grinding up the seeds, but for the most part, they stay intact. Okay, the toxicity from the seeds comes when they're pulverized to nothing. Like if that was mashed into a pulp, then you'd be extracting the uh, amygdalin that converts into cyanide. But concentration's not gonna be high enough. Those aren't pulverized, those are whole, and that's how they mostly come through. Anyways, pack it down a little bit. Go ahead and zip it up. Pressing plates, previous years I've used this, which is just some plain pine that I bolted together. It's a pain to clean, so let's make these ones. Just cherry rounds, two inch thick. Just make sure that they're small. Trace around the bottom of your bucket and they'll fit inside perfectly because most buckets are tapered and they only get about halfway down. So it doesn't need to be as small as the bottom, but pretty close and we just stack those on top to build up our height. Pressing mechanisms. I'm using a scissor jack out of my Jeep Grand Cherokee. The first year that I had it, I scrubbed it, cleaned it, and re-lubricated it with a food safe lubricant. Food equipment lubricant. I got this one from someplace online, I think, or it came with something I bought. And you just kind of put it on there and then you can okay. 
lube it up. And I've been using it ever since. Each year I do go through before I use it and I rewash it, inspect it, make sure that it's still okay for me to use for what I'm doing and I move on. I've also used the hydraulic jack. Um, it works decent too. I just don't like that it doesn't have the reach that this guy has. You have to stop, add a new plate and continue on. You can also use their Acme screw setups like traditional presses and all that stuff you can do a search for because I don't have that yet. But maybe, maybe in the future. People had comments about issues with debris from the jack falling in, rust, metal particles, things like that. I don't really have an issue with that. Um, I do strain, but if you do, you can use a sheet pan, set it underneath here, and it'll catch anything. To catch metal particles, you can use some magnets in a bag to catch those, or we just strain ours with a mesh strainer and some cloth. Some people were commenting to use a hook on a drill. I've done some recordings of those. I'll do a supplementary video for shenanigans and whatnot. This is just the main pressing video, so either watch my shorter videos or stay tuned for the other one. Someone mentioned use a jack with a hex on it and an impact or a driver, so that's all on there. We did that and we ended up breaking this jack, but it was fun. Hope you enjoy both videos. Now people are going to be saying, hey Gavin, you should probably be using an electric drill or an impact or something along those lines to be pressing. It's a lot easier, a lot faster. But you know what? I enjoy hand cranking it. Gives me more control over the press so the juice doesn't get locked in. A slower press helps it come out. I can get a feel of how tight everything's becoming. I can listen to the wood. After you're done pressing, go ahead and remove your blocks. See how it's compressed it halfway down. And this is what you're left with. Once you get it all mashed and you're done, just pull out your bag. Kind of give it a couple toss, loosen it up, and then dump it into a bucket. Or wherever you want to dump it. I'm probably gonna give this to the pigs. Uh, you can use it to make apple cider vinegar by adding some ingredients to it and letting it ferment and whatever else your heart desires. We then bring this over here and we give it to our little piggy, huh? You want some of that? You want some too? All right, and here's a quick example of using the uh, hydraulic jack. So I'll press it down just a little bit and then you'll need to release the pressure to get just a little bit more plate in there. And then sometimes I need to cut the corners off these or get another round plate because I can't press anymore. So we'll switch out our plate again to that one where I did cut it out. And we should be able to fit right back in. What I need to do is I need to put right in here a metal plate or another board because this is eating up the inside of my plate. So that's how I do my apple pressing. Uh, to wrap a few things up, yes, my process isn't the best, but it is a backyard press. It's supposed to be quick, easy, and simple. Um, most people probably have these things lying around if they want to do this, and they can get the job done. Once you have your juice, you have a couple different options. You can make it into hard cider and ferment it. You can turn it into apple cider vinegar. You can just can it like we do and drink it as cider, hot cider, or juice. What we do for our canning is we use the ball uh, home preserving book and use like steps three, four. It's just the canning process. We're not using their juicing process in this because I juice it through the um, press. Once it's canned, it does last up to usually about 18 months. That's recommended on any canned goods. Um, a little product stick for you. I sell these on my website. 
It just opens the lid and you can just drink it like that. Or you can serve it hot. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about anything, please let me know, reach out to me and I'll do the best that I can to answer them. And then next year we will do some more stuff. I'm hoping to start building my traditional press. We'll start with the bucket because I've got the parts for that. I am working on an additional video to go along this one with me just messing around, doing different presses. So if you want to see that, stay tuned. I should have it up here shortly after this one as everything goes to plan. And then again, thank you for watching and have a good day.